What does it mean to be a vulnerable Christian man? Walking through life weak and powerless is not what Jesus had in mind for us. It's time to fight. It's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. We are OB, Sean, Brandon, and Shane, and this is Hello the and welcome back Truth. to The Uncomfortable Truth. We are glad to have you this morning. We're talking a little faster because we're going to get this episode done in like 10 minutes. It's going to be <laughs> fun-filled and packed full of good information and value. You guys aren't going to want to miss it. Stay with us, wow. and we will get you there. You're impressive. Welcome <laughs> to The Uncomfortable Truth. Brandon's up today. So we yeah. had an uncomfortable moment for the week? That was it. Oh, well, I, I if we're doing four, quick. okay, you go. Real I've got quick. some. Have you ever woken up? On Saturday morning, random day, and you realize you're 40 years old. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. 40. Shane Goswick turned 40 this past Saturday. I did, yeah. Did you really? I did. You had a birthday. I did. Happy yeah, birthday, yeah. Sean. It's happy yeah. birthday to you, brother. March what? Thanks, man. What's even 18. more comfortable, you're uncomfortable, 18. is waking up in your 46. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. I know, dude. Man, you're we almost got three March birthdays. I know four year, four years, four years from fifty. Man. Oh, I had a buddy of mine at our board meeting last night turned forty nine. Yeah, man, you're almost dead, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I, hey, I love you, <laughs> um, Robbie Schultz. Uh, I, I ate uh, lunch with him, and he was like, "Sean, Daddy, you're pretty much fifty. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> Man, I'm four years from 50, dude. Don't make me <laughs> yeah. 50 yet. Slow I that roll down, now. man. We're not there yet. You're killing me. Well, you look good. Uh, yeah, I think you feel pretty uh, good. I'm just trying to keep up with y'all. <sighs> well, uh, I'm just trying to catch up with you y'all. You got a low bar. Yeah, I know, you know. <laughs> yeah, you need to re- reset your skills there, <laughs> yeah. dude. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> they say, what's that saying? Like the five, five people, people you hang around the most is who you are? Yep. You're in bad yeah. shape, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think you guys are doing it. All right. Doing something. Yep. Yeah. Uh, enough of the fluffy. John's yeah. trying to get fluffy. Uh, Obi, will you open us up yes. in prayer? Brandon, get started. Father, we thank you for our opportunity here to glorify you. Uh, we look for every chance that we get and pray that we just take advantage of every opportunity that we have to, to glorify and honor you and do some kingdom work for you, Lord. Uh, thank you for these men and what they mean to me, Lord. I pray that... Uh, Again, we would honor you with everything we do and say on this podcast. Um, Lord, if there's anyone out there that needs to hear your message, that needs to hear the gospel, um, you know, and, and what you've done for us, Lord, I pray that m- maybe this would be the opportunity where they would hear it. And, Lord, I just pray that you'll be with Brandon today uh, as he brings the word. And, Lord, I just pray for the rest of our week and watch over and protect us and our families. Amen. 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 So I read a story about a church that – had a heart for wanting to start college ministry like Bible studies. They had a college next to them, and everything they tried, they could not get any momentum. And the story, the true story goes like this. Basically, the pastor had his, he was convicted that they were going about it the wrong way. So he basically told his students, he said, that were in his church already, he said, anywhere you go for the next week, look for where God is working And the minute you recognize it, stop everything else you're doing and pour into that moment. And he said within like a day and a half, they had everything they needed and students coming from here, there, and yonder on the campus to basically start a college ministry tied to their church. Mm. One of the stories was a girl's headed to class and another girl comes up to her and says, hey, me and some girls have been reading the Bible. We're, I don't know if we understand it, but we need somebody who we think understands it. You seem to be that person by the way you live your life. Could you start teaching us? Interesting. So hmm. I'm going through a Bible study called Experiencing God by Blackaby. And and let me tell you guys, <clears throat> I have gotten it wrong for a long time. So when Moses sees the burning bush, He didn't say, hey, God, show up for me. Show me what you want. Show me what you want me to do. He was was around, okay, and the bush starts speaking to him. But I want to touch on a couple of things. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Because the Lord had just told him, you're my man. And he's immediately doubting it. Mm. So real quick, God doesn't need us. 
So the thing that's <laughs> just really been impressed upon my heart is, one, we've got to be available to recognize where God is working because he is working everywhere. Two, we have to be able to be in a relationship with him and know the word through prayer, through the word, to cross-check, because it's everywhere in here, guys, to see if it's really him working. Three, we're probably going to be brought to a crossroads of action pretty quick. And then four, are we going to take action? Are our actions going to match our priorities of what we, or what we say our priorities are? That's so my, the, that's, that's, that's the <clears throat> X factor, I feel and, like. And that's where the yeah. refinement occurs because Moses is basically saying, I'm not your guy, God. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not the one that you want to go talk to the Pharaoh. Now, remember Moses' history. He fled from the Egyptians because he didn't want to be a part of their culture, and he adopted you know, a Christian culture. Okay? But he, he left. So... My challenge to us, and then, you know, I want to get y'all's, you know, maybe a quick one-hitter thought process is, are we really looking and slowing down enough somewhere in our day to see where he's working? Because he's working everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost like, God, how can I join you? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I pray for every single day is part of my prayer, my ritual, uh, is... um, God, give me the opportunity, give me the platform and the opportunity to to share with others, you know. And, uh, you know, but then I get scurried throughout my day, and and I feel like I miss a lot of opportunities. You know, I'm not, I'm not really being intentional in that moment, you know, and it makes me think about what he told the college students to, you need to be aware. Situational awareness is a big deal. Mm-hmm. In every aspect of your life, you know, whether it's in your career, whether it's, you know, uh, with God, you know, um, with your family. Uh, So it's um, super important. I mean, if you're going to pray for that, you better dig them, slow down and look for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's it's uh, the reality is, is we don't. Yeah. Yeah. We we don't slow down and look for it. We we get up with every intention of putting God first and and. And we don't do it, you know. We 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 have, you know. When are we gonna I, start? I feel like we have seasons. Yeah. You know, and and but I feel like that's just that's not okay. Yeah. And and, right. and, and, and so I feel like, you know, it, it just in my life, I feel like the trials that I experience uh, are are the Holy Spirit just trying to like hit me and pull me back in line, and and it. And it all starts with the fact that I get so distracted mm-hmm. by all of these worldly things that I that I don't put him number one. He's not my I'm not, you know, I always I know the words. I talk about filtering my life through God. I talk about filtering my life through the lens of the Holy Spirit and making sure that everything that I do is lined up with God's will and I don't live it. I say it <clears throat> and I don't do it. And and it's like, that's that's kind of been my journey here lately. It's like, why do you, you know the answer. You know you're supposed, you, you know that God desires to be number one in your life. Mm-hmm. However, you're just, you're just, you're so distracted and inundated with all of these other things that you want to do or you think you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, this yeah. like this, this level of priorities that your brain sets for you that you know really isn't a priority. That's right. But we're doing it. Like I've I've done some reflecting in the past couple of days. I've felt some anxiety, like some physical anxiety, worse than than normal. And but there's nothing in my life that's much different besides the fact that um, I am trying to switch gears too many times, and I'm distracted, and I don't focus on anything, let alone God. Okay, you're with me. And 100%. so that like when I can't lock in on something and I and I haven't been able to, uh, my brain tells my stomach to tighten up. Mm-hmm. And it's a pattern that's happened for the past four years and it's just continuously gotten worse and worse and worse. And I gotta stop and you know, stopping and breathing, praying, like those things those things actually help. And you think like if you know me, you might think, Well, that guy's like he's just always calm. 
He doesn't ever get riled up. Well, sometimes inside I'm just like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to process that when everything in you doesn't want to feel that way. Right. When, when you know that it's unnecessary that you can let that go somehow and that God can take it. Or maybe, that's, maybe it's a, a tool God uses to bring me back to him. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I believe that it is. Yeah, I believe I'm, I believe that he's got to do something to get our attention. Yeah, and and I, I you know I was watching I sent you guys a video clip yesterday where we we talk about trial, we talk about struggle, and we talk about uh, how this guy in the video was talking about how if you weren't in the midst of trial, I would be more concerned with you than yeah. if you felt like you you know were in the midst of trial. And mm-hmm. he's like you. You have to recognize that those trials and that pull from the Holy Spirit isn't an absence of God. It's a, it's a reminder of God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I you think know. it's like, hey, stop, slow down. Like, Brandon, what you said, is stop what you're doing yes. and recognize. And I'm going to take got, it a step back. I got go a ahead. real go interesting ahead. story that happened yesterday at, at Hobby Lobby, but go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'll hop um, in we so got to hear about Hobby Lobby. It, it was very, yeah, you're going to like this. <laughs> Speaking of God getting your attention, uh, there's a girl that's friends with Lexi that works at Hobby Lobby in, in Longview. And uh, yesterday, this lady um, came to the line and uh, she checked her out, and the total was uh, $77.77. All right, hold up, Sean. $77.77. We're going to end this episode right here. You have to watch the next episode to listen to the rest of the Hobby Lobby story. I like it. All like right. It. We Sounds appreciate good. you guys being here. Go kick the day in the face, and we'll catch you on the next one.